Watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. In keeping with my recent trends, I have today another non-diver. So this one actually, in, in somewhat of a surprise, uh, comes from Ordez Watches. So uh, Ordez uh, is a company who's, who's actually provided me with some uh, interesting pieces to feature, usually very chunky, very tough build dive watches. But today, uh, I'm featuring the first one from them, uh, which isn't actually a diver. So, you know, kudos to them for going to a different direction uh, with this particular release. Uh, so it comes in this typical, uh, I guess, very utilitarian travel protective type case. So guys, without further ado, let's flip the camera around and take a closer look at today's piece. All right, guys, so here we have the packaging on the table here. Uh, let's have a look at spinability, actually, in this case, uh, with the weight of the watch in the middle. That's not bad. That's at least a three and a half for this, uh, despite the bit of friction you might expect from this very practical, uh, I guess, protective uh, travel type case. Uh, in this case, I actually have not got any documentation to show you at all. They've just shown me the watch and have sent me the plain watch because really, uh, this is slightly uh, before marketing launch. It is actually available on the website now, so take a look uh, at the links if you're interested to see more details about this piece. So guys, so here we have the Audaz Predator 2. Uh, so there was a Predator 1, I assume. I, I don't have details on that, but this is an update uh, of the original watch which they launched. Uh, and this has just come out very recently. ADZ2080 is the model range number, and this is 03 for the black on black colorway. There are a couple of other colorways, of course, as usually uh, are available. Take a look on the website uh, if you're interested in those. MSRP here is 400 USD, but I'm going to give you guys a discount code uh, for, I think, 30% off. So realistically, uh, this conversation will be about a $280 uh, dollar cost watch. You know, that's realistically, uh, I think, what we should discuss here, 280 USD, uh, which is pretty, you know, fair value, I think, for what is on offer here. All right, let's, uh, as I usually do, first talk about the movement in here. So, you know, immediately you'll realize it's a skeletonized movement. It is actually the Miyota 82S7. I featured this, I think, a couple of other times in the channel. can't remember which watches uh, have featured it, but you've seen this watch on the channel before. Uh, what it does have, you know, apart from the specs I've listed on the left of screen, uh, is that it, it does hack, it does have manual winding, uh, and on the front of the watch you'll see there is a small seconds display at about the 430 uh, position as well as a 24 hour display uh, at the 9 o'clock uh, position in addition to you know what is effectively an open heart uh, display on this uh, particular uh, movement uh, which is featured here. A rated accuracy, as you can see there, in actual use, about plus six seconds per day, which is not bad, you know, for this movement. It's actually fairly well regulated out of the box from Ordez. Okay, let's talk about the case here, which, uh, you know, immediately you'll see is a tonneau case. This is very much a tonneau shaped case. Uh, black PVD is the treatment that is covering uh, this entire case. Uh, it does have a 44 millimeter diameter so the, the horizontal diameter between my kind of thumb and forefinger here is 44 millimeters. Thickness is just over 16 millimeters, 16.3 uh, by calipers. Uh, they've gone for 23 millimeter lug, which is an interesting choice, 23 millimeter lug width there. And it's got a pretty large lug to lug distance of no less than 53 millimeters. So that is pretty darn large. Uh, on silicon rubber is not too heavy. It comes out at 125 grams total is what this weighs. Finishing wise, not too much to speak about. It's, it's actually nearly matte, but there is a very subtle longitudinal brushing uh, on most of the surfaces here. And then in between, you know, here is, is kind of really just matte, you know, very subtle brushing there. It, it might as well be completely matte. I think you're not going to notice it in any great uh, way. Uh, the case back you can see there is secured by four screws uh, on the periphery, right? It's got a push crown, right? It's got a display, of course, showing that Miyota movement. Uh, with that push crown, it's rated at 100 uh, meters water resistant. 
uh, and you know that's actually fairly good. Uh, I've taken this into a shower. I guess I'd be hesitant to take a watch with a push crown into a pool. That's just you know my uh, kind of view on these things. Okay, let's move on to the dial now. So dial has a lot of the action here. Let me just uh, adjust that away to kind of more of a 10 past 10 position to optimize the view here. Okay, so the dial here is uh, really, it's got black PVD on it. It is a skeletonized multi-layered dial. It's got applied numerals and indices that you can see here. Of course, the numerals are at the uh, even positions, two, four, six, eight, and all that. And then it's got just simple batons at most of the intervening uh, odd positions there. The chapter ring is plinted on the, the flange or the rehort around the periphery, as you can see. Uh, it's got multi-hand indicators for the 24-hour subdial at uh, you know about the 9 o'clock position. And then at the 4 o'clock position or 4.30, it's got, a, again, an, a multi-handed indicator for the uh, small seconds. Uh, of course, the tip is indicated by the white point and all the others are you know kind of just cool, decorative, industrial, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, element there is what they're kind of going for. I guess goth maybe you can think in terms of the overall steampunk type feel uh, of this watch. In terms of loom, uh, it, it's got, I, I don't think they actually tell me what loom it is, but it's it's kind of like a bluish colored loom. It's not very good. That's not obviously not very thickly applied. Doesn't actually last through the night. So it's a little bit of a uh, slight function if you are only going to be in the dark for a short moment. I'll show a loom shot right here for you guys to see how it looks like in the dark. Okay, on top of the dial is uh, a pleasingly, uh, you know, curved sapphire crystal. It's not dome, it's very much uh, flat in that, uh, you know, dimension, I suppose, if you will, but on this dimension, it is very much a very, you know, a curved uh, profile to that uh, sapphire crystal there. That's really what you're getting here. Okay, so that's the entire description of the watch case. Let's move on to the band. Uh, and the band here is silicon rubber. It's got texture, it's got stitching. Okay, so real stitching all around the side there. And then it's got a brushed black PVD buckle with all that. That's really not too surprising in terms of the finishing of this watch. All right, so that's it guys. Let's put it on the wrist for a wrist shot for you guys to see right now. And there we have it guys, the Audaz Predator 2 on my 17 centimeter wrist. It is definitely a large watch for me. So remember, you know, thickness is 16 millimeters. So it really sits quite high, 44 millimeter case diameter or case, you know, I guess width. And then 53 millimeter is the lug to lug, which is, uh, you know, I, I think it's a little bit too large yet somehow because it's a tonneau case, it still sits kind of borderline acceptable i think and that's really what i think of this watch it is definitely large no no you know two ways about that i think uh, at least for me okay so guys that's the uh entire uh description let's talk about what have i enjoyed particularly about this watch so look guys this is uh you know it's, it's refreshing and audacious dare i say it of them to take a risk on a tonneau watch, right? In, in a world of divers, in, in a brand that's uh, known for divers, at, at least a lot of their other watches have been dive style, you know, ostensibly. Uh, I, I like that they've gone for this. It's something quite different. Uh, like the other watches, it is absolutely solidly made. This case craft is, you know, it, it's absolutely solid. No complaints about the way it's been finished in, you know, in this black PVD. It's really, you know, up to par, it really achieved, I think, what they're going for. Uh, and I think this tonneau sits de deceptively well on the wrist, you know, despite the, the massive dimensions, it really is quite big. Somehow with, with the tonneau, you know, that profile, that curve, it kind of sits just okay, I think. So, so, you know, I think even if you normally won't carry a watch this big, you, you know, I, I think you can get away with it, that is, especially if your wrist is going to be slightly larger than mine. Uh, what are the weaknesses? Well, look, honestly, I'll say this is definitely a rather large and thick watch. It is also top heavy, you know, I, I've kind of accidentally fell asleep with this on the wrist with the silicon rubber and this chunky case. It, it actually does, you know, you do feel it. I, I think I woke up because I kind of felt this uh, a little bit uncomfortable on the wrist, to be honest. And tonneau design, uh, it won't be for everyone. Not everybody will like a tonneau case, but you know, it is something different. So if you're looking for something other than a round watch, uh, consider a tonneau is, is what I'd say. Uh, the 23 millimeter lugs, 
you know, lastly, uh, I'd say it's a little bit of an odd choice. Not sure why they went for that. They, they could easily have made it 22 and keep the overall look and keep it swappable. 23, that much more difficult to find swap out straps, really. Okay, so there you go. That's my thoughts uh, on this watch. Let's just flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys, my review of the Predator 2. Uh, is it a Predator of a watch? Does it actually remind you of the science fiction movie, the Schwarzenegger movie? Uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it does in a little bit, you know, that kind of a grunge, uh, uh, sci-fi, uh, cyberpunk type of look that it's going for. Let me know what you think uh, about this particular piece. And at 280, uh, you know, with, with all the features that it gives, you know, that movement, Sapphire, Black PVD, uh, I think the value is actually pretty fair, you know, it's not really copying anybody and I appreciate that it is, you know, it's largely an original design. So look forward to your thoughts, particularly if you've uh, gone and got this piece or if you have any uh, other Audaz watches in your collection, would like to hear from you for sure. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.